Hey friends, I'm Scott Hanselman. Uh, someone said on Twitter they wanted to know how to do static website hosting in Azure Storage. Azure Storage is like Amazon S3, right? It's a place where you just put your blobs, your stuff, your static things. If you make a website, you could use something like Azure App Service, which would let you host PHP or Python or .NET or Java or whatever. That's your dynamic websites. But what if you just have some, some HTML files? Uh, here I've got in a folder, uh, an HTML file with some JavaScript that represents a, uh, a podcast. So I've got some JavaScript, some CSS. If I double click on it, it, it goes and it plays my, my podcast. Maybe I would want to make a website around that. So I want to serve static content in the cheapest possible way. I could go and make an Azure app service, but it might cost me, you know, eight, nine bucks. Maybe I could do it for less with static content. So I'm going to just go through this tutorial here and see if I can do that because uh, some folks on Twitter said it was kind of confusing. Maybe it would be okay if I actually went through it and tried it out. Let's see. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Azure, so I'm going to go and say azure.com. You can go azure.com slash free. That's where you can sign up for free Azure and you get 12 months of free services. There's a bunch, bunch of places that you can get a lot of free service. You get like five gigs of free storage, blob storage. Um, so th this will be super cheap. I don't know if it'll be free, but it'll be darn near free. So I'm going to log into the uh, the Azure portal here. I'll just go home. My Azure portal goes into a dashboard. So here I am in Azure Azure portal. I'll go and make a storage account. So let me say something like new storage account. And I'll say, well, let's we'll put in a new resource group. A resource group is basically a dotted line or a circle around something that just gives it a label. If I could put everything in static website, Everything that I create, I can put in that resource group, and then I could potentially delete that group and make it go away later. So we'll say static website uh, without the uh, space, okay? All right, uh, general storage, blah, 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 access tier, frequently accessed data, or infrequently accessed. Uh, we'll say frequently, although I'll probably put it behind a content distribution network at some point, okay? We'll go and make our static website, and we're going to make it in uh, our static blob storage, rather. And we'll put it into a resource location. That'll be, you remember, so it's going to, your deployment is underway, so it's going to go and do that. Make a resource group called static website. Okay, let's go back over here. Set up a static website. Set the name of your default file and a path to a 404. Fine. If a storage container named uh, dollar sign web doesn't already exist. All right, cool. All right, let's go back over here. They're making our super fancy static website. Let's go over there. Cool, cool. I'm going to go down here on the left-hand side. There's all these settings. You can scroll where you can type in what you want to find. Static website. Configuring blob for static website allows you to do hosting. Okay, index document name. That'll be index.html. I don't have an error document yet, but we'll say someday it could be error. An Azure storage container has been created. Okay, cool. No blobs found. Okay. Do, do, do. Files on the web container are case sensitive, serve to anonymous requests. Now I'm going to go over here and say change access level. I probably want this to be anonymous read access. Right, so I want to make sure that everybody can get to that. Cool. Viewing content, you can go through and look at it a lot of different ways. Um, I like to use the Azure Storage Explorer. You can download this for free. Just go and Google uh, for Azure Storage Explorer. It's a cross-platform app. It'll run on a Mac. It'll run on Linux. It runs everywhere. I'm going to go ahead and open mine up and this is just like a drag and drop tool for looking at Azure Azure storage okay let's go and look at our storage accounts there's a bunch of other accounts that I have here's super fancy static site blob containers web see nothing in there okay so I'm gonna take this I'll put it over here and then I'm going to go and grab this, and then we'll drop it in here. Okay, transferring in. It says it might be out of date because things have changed, so I'm going to hit yes. 
There you go. So I've got my files and they're sitting in, in here. Okay, there's a couple ways you can figure out what that URL is. You can say copy URL, you see? Super fancy static site, dot blob, dot this, dot that, dot went, 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 right? There you go. See if it works. Yeah, see? Okay, so I'm pulling that in from here. That's the URL. So it's the name of my location, dot blob, yada, yada, yada. That's not really a friendly URL. I probably want to come up with a better a better name for that. But you can see right off the bat, and let me actually try it like this. Static website, let me check the instructions. The index document appears when the users open the site and don't... Okay, let's try it again. Ah! Static website, there you go. So it's not located in that location because I'm sitting hitting that and I'm thinking this sucks. It's actually on web. See, it says blob. So this is the URL for the blob storage. I actually got a, hey, look at that, dot web, dot core. Okay. Do I need that? I do need that. See? So that's my actual URL and that works just fine. So here they're actually telling me that, see? RTFM, my friends. Okay. Now this here says you can modify the public access, which you saw me do before, but you don't actually have to do it. So that's interesting. Does not... No? Ah, okay. <laughs> blobs access level here we go this access level here is for the blobs so that's interesting so what this means is that there's this URL dot something dot web okay and then there's this URL see now that I just changed to private so we can't get there that makes sense this is the Azure storage URL, and this still works. That's my new static website, web.core. Cool. All right. To make your static website available over a custom domain, use the Azure CDN. Point it at the static website endpoint. Okay, cool. So let's go do that. CDN. Add CDN, my fancy static site. Ah, so origin type, storage, cloud service, web app or custom origin. So I'm thinking to myself, maybe I want to make that somewhere else. So I'm going to say custom because we are going to be at super fancy fancy static site right there. Mm, here we go. CDN, my fancy static site. My fancy static site dot Azure Edge. So this endpoint points to that host name. If it's a new endpoint, it might not be ready yet. Ready yet. Okay, so I've got my endpoint point this here. Uh, right now it's saying 404, so it's probably waiting for the CDN to kind of uh, get up to speed. While I'm waiting, I will hit do a custom domain, and we're going to go and we're going to point DNS to something custom. So I'm going to go to my DNS company. Let me see what I got lying around. OK, 
Okay, here's a random domain that I've got that's not being used for anything. So let's set up a custom domain. Okay, and this will say make sure the DNS record points to my fancy static site dot Azure edge dot net. Okay, I'll do www DNS DNS records CNAME www point to Azure. So I've done that. And this record points to there, and I just went over here and removed it and then added it back. So it says, cool, found it, add. Trading custom domain. Cool, got it. Can take up to 10 minutes, cool. Click custom HTTPS, sweet. CDN managed, sweet. It's going to go out and register a SSL certificate for me, and it'll take care of it all, including renewal. Last thing I want to do is worry about my SSL certificates. This is all included, it's free within the CDN stuff. Cool, your cool custom domain. Dom uh, Request is being submitted, could be up to two hours. Cool. So they're going to verify it. They'll send an email or they'll look at the domain to see if it's mapped, and it is mapped. So I'll just chill and wait for a couple hours and that'll come back. All right, it's been about 10 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and hit my URL. Now I'm getting a not secure because you can see that it's still using Azure Edge. It has not yet updated my certificate, but I was able to click through that and my static website is working. In fact, we can go back over here and look at our custom domains. We can see the request has been submitted. It's in the process of validating. We can try hitting super fancy static site that works. And then we pointed this to our CDN, which is here and that works. So to explain and conclude, you make a storage site, put your stuff in there with Storage Explorer. So to give you a sense of what we're doing here, I made a storage account. You get five gigs free. I used Storage Explorer. to upload my static content. That gave me a free URL that looked like this. And that's under HTTPS. And I did that by turning on static site, remember? So we were over here in our storage. We came here, we said static website, and we turned it on. We got a URL. Then we put a CDN, a content distribution network, on top of it. Then we pointed our CNAME, that's our CNAME of our domain, at that location. So our CNAME, in this case, we took this pointed it here and then we asked for a free SSL cert from the Azure CDN. Okay, Now here I'm just dragging files directly into the Storage Explorer and then I would go over into my CDN for my static site and I would say purge but I could also use, if I wanted, 
a couple of other things. I could I could upload files with the Azure CLI. CLI means command line interface. So I could say Azure Storage Blob Upload, etc. And there's a whole little command line that you could go and do. Uh, the other option is I could use something like Azure DevOps, or I could use GitHub Actions, and I could run a static site generator where I run and generate a whole bunch of HTML and then I upload that in some way and it'll be sitting in Azure Storage. So you could make a whole blog like this with one of the many popular static site generators like Jekyll or whatever and, and throw it up in there. And it's the difference between paying you know 20 or 30 or 40 dollars with an Azure website which is dynamic and maybe paying a buck uh, or 20 cents for something like an Azure Storage account. So that's how you set this stuff up and I'll see my secure certificate show up a little bit later when this has uh, finished up. Cool. Catch y'all later.